and this is going to be on nuclear medicine. So I apologize for that, but it's after lunch, you know, everyone needs to wake up. So uh, from unclear medicine to nuclear medicine, uh, the first part, we're going to talk about acute and emergency settings. The second part, we're going to talk about uh, the clinic settings, which are routine settings. There'll be a small DVT prophylaxis break. You're just supposed to stand up and stretch and go right back down. So it's not a pretzel break. Um, I have no disclosures. Uh, I will not discuss off-label use. And I'm very thankful to our patients, our technologists, and their families. So we're going to talk about uh, common scenarios. This is a refresher, a review course. We're not talking about everything nuclear medicine in two hours. Common scenarios, very important for us to uh, recognize and respond to normal biodistributions and what are the critical things we need in order to generate a meaningful uh, consultational work product. So we're starting with the first case, uh, mobiles to the ready. Again, this is going to be a word cloud case. So tell us uh, in your word cloud, uh, whatever comes to mind when you see uh, the following image. So the history, uh, unlike you, I get fantastic history from my emergency room. So every uh, study for pulmonary embolism gets an amazing history, which is exactly the same. It says rule out PE, and that ship has sailed. So I'm giving you all of the cases are going to be the exact history, however ridiculous or reductive it seems, that I received. So none of these histories has been made up. So rule out PE, and these are the images that uh, are submitted to me. These are perfusion images. And I'm going to ask you for your impressions. So take a good look at these images and then uh, tell me what your impression is going to be. Excellent. So uh, non-diagnostic seems to be slight. Oh, PE is, is uh, so the majority of us think that this is a PE. And someone thought it was a gallbladder, which is very distressing. But at the end of two hours, uh, we're, we're going to help this, this, this hapless person. So excellent. So here we are. Most of us uh, in this room think this is PE. Uh, and someone said, yes, the question was not binary. But hey, you do you. And, and then, of course, the, the gallbladder person. So we're going to, to see how we can all uh, go ahead with uh, looking at pulmonary embolism. So this was acute pulmonary embolism. So the first question is, where's vent? Somebody said, where's vent? Well, there is no vent. Uh, in an effort to reduce radiation, uh, we don't do ventilation imaging anymore because it really doesn't change anything uh, except that uh, if a patient is truly short of breath or on a ventilator or unable to uh, be masked, then they're releasing the aerosol or the xenon-133 and radiating our technologists and uh, the remainder of our nuclear medicine department. So we've really stopped doing ventilation studies altogether. We only do perfusion studies using four millicuries uh, for adults, and we use half dose, two millicuries for children, uh, those under 18 or anybody who has a declared pregnancy. So when we look at these images, uh, a majority of us said, well, this is acute pulmonary embolism. This is PE. Uh, this is not the gallbladder. And we look at the gallbladder a little bit later to figure out why this is not the gallbladder. So when we think that this is acute PE, what are we looking at? Well, we're doing a lot of imaging in the emergency room. This is uh, a a graph from Jonathan Chung's paper, which showed how many chest radiographs we do in our emergency room. And this is uh, across the entire country. And if, if you're uh, a salmon or a scarlet state, you can see that you have more chest CT per thousand ED visits. Uh, in 2015 than the others. So we're doing a lot of needless imaging. Uh, in these cases, when we're uh, suspecting an acute pulmonary embolism, a Q scan or a half-dose Q scan is still a reasonable thing to do. 
Risk stratification, we use the PERC or the Wells criteria to determine whether indeed there is a high probability pretest of pulmonary embolism. And in select cases, um, we can use clinical decision support to support whether or not we should do Q imaging.